containing rogue access points in a wireless network. Let's begin. Have you ever played that game where you're shown two pictures and then you're supposed to look for the subtle differences between the two pictures? Well, we're going to play that same game, you and I, with these wireless networks. Now, I've got several different devices advertising an SSID of local-fast. I've got one on channel 149, one on 161, and one that's using a couple of channels right next to each other. And those are represented down here as well. So there's the channel 36 and 40, here's the channel 149, and there's the channel 161. Now there is a slight difference with the received signal strength indicator and also the MAC addresses are going to be different for each one of them. So those are some differences. But the biggest difference I want to talk about for a moment is this one right here. This one and this one are doing both WPA2. But this third one right here with the last two digits of 17 in its MAC address, it's using open authentication. It's very likely that if this was a corporate infrastructure, what we would be looking at is some access point that is a rogue device that's trying to lure in some customers. If someone in your environment, whether it's an airport, at your corporate network, if they're emulating or spoofing your SSID, trying to lure people in, it's very likely malicious. And secondly, if we have a customer like Bob that associates with this rogue access point and starts using it, then the attacker who has that rogue access point can now perform a man in the middle attack and eavesdrop on all of Bob's traffic. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a wireless LAN controller, and the wireless LAN controller knows exactly which access points it manages. Now the cool thing is these access points, they are not by default just sitting there servicing their customers on their respective channels. They're also periodically scanning the other channels, gathering information which they feed back to the wireless LAN controller. Part of that information it gathers is information about access points that they see. So when the wireless LAN controller sees an access point that it doesn't manage and isn't part of the wireless controller family, it's going to classify that access point as a rogue. So our very first step inside the controller is to take a look and see if the controller knows about any rogue access points. And then after we find that access point, we'll take the next logical step, and that is to contain it. From the controller main page, the monitor page right here in the upper right hand corner, it's going to show us the details regarding active rogue access points. Now, you might say, well, Keith, how come, so, how come so many rogue access points? It's because this controller is only managing three access points and all the others that it can see all the other broadcast SSIDs that are being sent are being seen by one or more of these access points and it's being reported back to the controller. And that's why the controller puts them in the category of rogue. It simply doesn't know who those devices are. To take a look at the details of these rogue access points, we simply click on the detail link. And what we're going to see is this, this guy right here. <laughs> so the SSID is local-fast, but this is not one of the access points that the controller manages. And that's how it quickly identified it as a rogue. I'd like you to pay special attention to the last two characters there, the 17 of the MAC address for that wireless local area network. That'll help us identify that specific MAC address as we'll see here in just a moment. If we look at the details of that, we'll go into the details of that access point. So there's the MAC address right there. There's the first time it was seen and the last time it was reported on. And down here near the bottom, it's talking about the two access points that reported it. They're both reporting that they saw this guy on channel 36. And they're also including information such as the received signal strength indicator and the signal to noise ratio. Now you might be saying, well, Keith, that's great. We know we have a rogue access point. How do we contain that device? How do we shut them down? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our access points, which besides supporting normal customers are also gonna spend now a little bit of extra time, the ones that can currently see that rogue access point, and they are going to perform effectively a denial of service attack against that access point. And it's gonna do that by using deauth messages. So now if Bob is trying to associate with that rogue access point, now, because these deauth messages are being sent by the access points, these access points are also going to spoof, which is a, a nice way of saying lie about the MAC address involved. So that Bob or any other customers who are trying to work with the rogue access point are going to be bombarded with deauth messages. And the whole goal here is to make sure that access point, which is rogue, it's not managed by us, to make sure that no valid customers associate with that. I also want to point out something very important is that this rogue AP that we are going to contain or shut down by doing deauth attacks against it. So because this rogue access point is mine, I manage it, I put it up for this demonstration, attacking my own access point is not a big deal. However, I should point out that attacking somebody else's wireless local area network is a big deal and you definitely would not ever want to do that 
against any other legitimate networks because it will cause a denial of service attack against that network. So to do that, looking at the details of this rogue AP, all we need to do is go under update status and say, I want to change this to contain instead of alert. And now the question is, how many access points should we use to go ahead and deal with that containment? Well, I only have two access points that are currently able to see the rogue device. So if I wanted to use both of them to send the deauth messages, I'd simply say two, and then we'd simply click on apply to make that change. And it gives us a little warning saying, warning Will Robinson, this could be illegal. But because it's my own access point, I am gonna click on okay. So now what's gonna happen, what is happening right now is there's a deauth attack happening against that rogue access point and it will remain in place until we turn that off. So here we have the status called contain, which is great news. If we wanna turn that off and take off the attack, we'll simply change the status back to alert, click on apply, and the deauth attacks have now stopped. So as we look at this with the protocol analyzer, here we have some normal beacons from that rogue access point. This is frame 242 right here that we're looking at the detail of, and the beacons being sent out periodically. So here's the SSID, there's its supported rates, and there's that MAC address that we recognize. Now if we take a look down here at packet 244, this one, although that MAC address looks the same, this is not coming from the rogue access point. This is one of the two access points that we control that's doing the deauthentication attack against this rogue. So although it looks like the source MAC address is involved, these are being initiated by our own access points in that DOS attack. And if we go down further, it's gonna continue over and over and over again. And again, the goal is to make sure that no valid clients accidentally associate with the rogue access point, or if they do, they won't be on there very long because of the periodic deauthentication messages which are coming through. In this micro nugget, we took a look at using the wireless LAN controller to quickly identify rogue access points and to contain them. And then we verified the results using Wireshark. I've had a great time. I appreciate you joining me. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.